So good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm presenting a joint work with Sasha Spiegelman, where we describe a vulnerability in the mining protocol of proof of work cryptocurrencies. So. Mm -hmm. Why do we care? Why is it interesting? Well, money. All those coins are worth a lot of money. No? And it's all thanks to the proof of work technology. And yes, it's the same work from yesterday's talk. She's in charge of it. Now, proof of stake is the core mechanism that enables Bitcoin to thrive. It enables to solve consensus in an open network and to mitigate civil attacks. This is exactly what guarantees the security of the coin. So it's very important. But nothing comes for free. And using proof of work is extremely expensive. The energy consumption of Bitcoin alone is larger than several not so small countries. Common examples are Nigeria and Morocco, but there are many others. I'm not gonna go into much detail, but just to describe it a little bit, a proof of work based coin uh, implements a blockchain abstraction over a network of miners with open topology. Each block defines a puzzle that could only be solved using uh, brute force hash operations. And each block has, a, each puzzle has a difficulty. And the chances of the probability of a mining, of a hash operation solving the puzzle depends on the difficulty. The miners are the main entities that are maintaining the security of the system. Each miner tries to solve the puzzles using hash operations in order to add new blocks. And each miner has different machinery. They have more mining power or less mining power. And once a miner finds a solution, the solution is broadcast through the network and a new block is added. This block defines the next puzzle that needs to be solved. Okay, but coins have several challenges they need to address. First of all, incentivize the miners. Miners should get paid enough to make their efforts worthwhile. So let's assume that we pay the miners enough and miners want to come and mine. And more miners join and they mine very fast and they find a lot of solutions and they generate blocks in a very high rate. This raises the next problem. Folks, when blocks are generated too fast and the broadcasting time is too slow, then the chain splits into competing subchains. This severely damages the consistency of the coin and should definitely be avoided. But we cannot control the broadcasting times. That is due to the internet. It is out of our reach. The coin, however, decides the difficulty. So we control the block generation rate through the difficulty. The higher the difficulty, the lower the block generation rate is. And if we know the total mining power, it's very easy. The block generation rate in expectation is exactly the total mining power divided by the difficulty. Unfortunately, the total mining power is unknown because we wish to keep the system open and anonymous. So what's the thing to do? Let's estimate it based on what we observe. The coin can uh, know, it knows the difficulty because it sets it. It can observe the current rate and therefore it can try to decide the rate for the next, for the future. How is this done? Simply, the execution is divided into epochs. Each epoch consists of a fixed number of blocks. In Bitcoin, it's 2016 blocks per epoch. So now when execution begins, the difficulty is D, let's say, and the blocks are found in the desired rate. Once the epoch ends, the coin takes a look and says, well, that is the rate that we want, so we can keep the difficulty as is and keep on going. Again, if you see, the rate is good, just like we want, so what happens to the difficulty? Remains the same. But now let's assume that some miners joined. Well, that was fast. That was too fast for the coin. So what does the coin do now? 
makes the difficulty harder. Once the difficulty is harder, the rate decreases back to the normal rate that we want. Everything is good. Once that epoch ends, we can set the difficulty again. And since the rate is just as we desire, it stays the same. But now miners decided to leave. And the epoch takes very long to complete. So the coin says that the rate is too slow. It has to update the difficulty, so it reduces it appropriately. And again, we have the desired rate, and so on and so forth. Everything good and simple. Except that our result shows that the difficulty adjustment mechanism is vulnerable. Let's analyze the desired behavior from the coin's perspective. The security of a coin depends on the active mining power. More active power equals more security, linearly. Therefore, coins want miners to always mine with their full power. And in the desired state, a miner experiences this execution. A miner has some fixed costs, such as buying machinery, and some variable costs, such as electricity. And we normalize everything by time. And it also adds revenues from finding blocks. And you can say that there is an expected revenue per time because you know how much blocks you are expected to find per time unit. You know the difficulty. You know your mining power, your hash power. And in the desired steady state behavior, we're also talking economically. So the revenues of a miner should exactly cover its costs perhaps with some negligible epsilon, but we can neglect that. Also, we want to have a desired rate, and since each epoch consists of exactly 2016 blocks, then the epoch's duration sets the average rate. So all epochs should be of duration tau. In Bitcoin, tau is about two weeks. Now, if miners are honest, that is approximately what happens. Now let me show you what happens when miners are smart. A smart miner alternates between resting and mining. When it rests, it has no variable costs, but it also receives no revenues. Those idle epochs become longer because less mining power is active, and it takes longer to find those 2016 necessary blocks. Because those epochs become longer, the difficulty for the consecutive epoch decreases. If the difficulty decreases, it is easier to find new blocks. So mining becomes more profitable, and we strike gold. Now, a smart miner experiences the execution like that. It starts with the normal behavior, where its revenues cover its costs exactly. Then it begins the attack by remaining idle, in this epoch, it has no revenue, no variable costs, but it has to pay the fixed costs. After this epoch, the difficulty decreases, mining becomes more profitable, and he has to pay again the fixed costs and now also the variable cost because it's mining. <coughs> but now he gets extra revenue because it's easier to mine. After this epoch, the difficulty adjustment mechanism computes actually evaluates the total mining power accurately and sets the difficulty back to normal. So our attacker rests again and waits for the next profitable epoch to begin, and so on and so forth. Now we should ask, when is smart mining profitable? Well, figuratively, whenever the green rectangle is larger than the red rectangle. That's simple. The size of the rectangles depends both on the mining power that the attacker has, that depends the width, that uh, defines the width of both uh, rectangles, and also the height of the green rectangle. And of course, it also depends on the fixed cost. The more fixed cost, the higher the red rectangle is. So we wrote the exact equations, and we did some mathematics. And this graph shows when smart mining strictly dominates honest mining, the entire blue area under the curve. What, what dominates smart or honest mining 
blue or white is a function of two variables, the mining power on the x-axis and the cost structure on the y-axis. For example, let's say that our cost structure is uh, mostly electricity. So our fixed costs are only 5% of the total cost. In that case, smart mining already dominate honest mining for 6 or 7% of the total mining power. Now, can we do better? In the paper, we show something quite better. We show smarter mining. It's a very simple extension of smart mining into mixed strategies. Instead of just mine with full power or stay idle, this time we allow the attacker to mine with uh, only part of its machinery. The details are in the paper. I'm not going to go into it. I'll just mention that smarter mining is extremely profitable in several cases. It can lead to 20% return of investment, which is very high. Also, in many cases, it's profitable even for very small miners. Okay, back to smart mining. What happens to the other, to the other miners during an attack? What do, do the other miners experience? Well, let's look at their costs. The fixed costs remain the same because they are fixed. And the variable costs are, always the same, are also the same because they are always mining with their full power. They use the same amount of electricity. Well, it also stays the same. But what happens to the revenues? In the attacker's idle epochs, the difficulty is exactly as it is in the normal behavior. So they get the same revenue per time. But when the miner attacks, it attacks because the difficulty of this epoch is lower. And if the difficulty is lower, it's not only for him, it's for everybody. So they also enjoy the extra revenues of those epochs. What happened is that the other miners enjoy the extra revenues, but don't have to pay for the idle epochs. Great, so everybody wins. The attacker, the other miners, even the environment, because we save on electricity. Only the coin security suffers. Because during idle epochs, not all mining power uh, is being used to guarantee the coin security. And other miners have no incentive to mitigate this attack because they profit out of it. In fact, in several cases, they might even join the attack. Maybe if we allow new miners to join the system, that would solve the problem. Unfortunately not. Miners that didn't want to join in the normal state have no incentive to join the idle epochs. They see the same profitability as before. But maybe they want to join the extra profitable epochs. Now, what will happen if they join the extra profitable epochs is that the difficulty adjustment mechanism will recognize that now there is more mining power than normal. So it will adjust the difficulty for the next epoch to be harder than normal. When the difficulty is harder than normal, the revenue per time <coughs> decreases to be below normal. And that can push honest miners into losses. And an honest miner that experienced losses during this epoch might say to himself, well, I'm losing money here. I should leave the system altogether. And that would cause the coin security to collapse. So if you remember our results, the difficulty adjustment mechanism is vulnerable. Itai Ayal and Gun uh, presented a very important and popular work that was the first one to have a mining attack on Bitcoin. An attacker in the, in the strategy uh, we sold blocks in order to make the other miners spend their energy on trying to solve uh, old and stale puzzles. This way, the attacker can increase its share in the revenues. Let's compare our attack to theirs. Where does the profit come from? In selfish mining, it comes on the expense of other miners. In smart mining, it comes from reducing electricity costs and variable costs for the attacker and having higher 
revenues for all miners. So it's not a zero sum game among miners. Who might attack? In selfish mining, only very large miners. Maybe this is why this attack was never actually witnessed, even though it's known since 2014. In smart mining, big miners as well as small miners may attack. What about coin security? Selfish mining, there is very little effect. With smart mining, there are many situations where minority attacks are possible. And what happens when new miners join? Like we said, with selfish mining, the attack is mitigated. With smart mining, it's exacerbated. To conclude, the difficulty, the ideal difficulty adjustment is a continuous process. The actual mechanism tries to emulate it using a discrete one. The result, the portrayed vulnerability. Is this inherent? We're not sure. But we do believe that similar issues are likely to arise in other systems that are trying to emulate continuous processes by discrete ones, since this is a very, very delicate issue. And as you know, in real world systems, they don't really pay it that much attention. Thank you for listening. Well, uh, we only have a claim that what the, the coin desires to be an equilibrium is not an equilibrium. Yeah, right. We do not know if this strategy is indeed an equilibrium. That is still an open question. And I am not aware of that happening in reality, although it might be a little bit hard to notice because there is some variability. And the coin uh, payoff is not really fixed of blocks because it keeps on changing. The block values and the coin value keeps on changing. So I don't know of any, but maybe now that now we'll see it, now that it's published, who knows? Well, the variability you can, in the paper, you can see it exactly what it makes the variability of the length of, of epochs. Uh, there is some mathematics, but it's quite simple. It doesn't have to be that big. Uh, yeah? Surprisingly not. Surprisingly not. If you look at, uh, at revenues per time, then it's exactly the same. If you look per epoch, yes, they get more per epoch because the epoch is longer. But they look how much are they making per time unit. Okay, I think I should let the next speaker also, or do we have some more time? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that answers your question. Thank you. You just said that this behavior was observed. Okay. Well, reducing epoch time will not help. There are other things that might uh, reduce the possibility of the attack a little bit, but it won't uh, limit it completely. There are other methods. It will, it will make a difference of when uh, smart mining dominates, but uh, the idea is still the same. You just add uh, 3% and you need to make more profit than that. That's it. The picture would look basically the same, and especially if you look at smarter mining, then it, it really won't change significantly.
you also using this thing?